Well, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We're working on the Hummer again and what we're going to be doing is control arms, hub assembly, wheel bearing, whichever you want to call it, and then inner and outer tie rods. Now, I've already done the driver's side. To get this control arm out, you got to get the uh, shock out. I cannot think. But, um, I think the driver's side had been changed before because what's concerning me is the nuts were on the inside on the driver's side and also this bracket right here was not on there and you have to reuse that so that's what's making me think that that had been changed before the upper control arm along with the cross shaft bolt the toe of it was facing the sway bar oh and i just saw that the shock, the nut is on the outside over here and on the inside over there. So one of them been changed. I'm thinking driver's side because this bracket is missing. But first thing we're gonna do to get this control arm out of here first, that's my first task is I'm gonna pull this cross shaft bolt, uh, pull this out of here. I did pull it before I started filming. So I uh, forgot about grabbing my camera. But just pull that out of there and it kind of just flop around. So, I'm gonna pull this cross shaft bolt out and kind of get this control arm to come up. But there's 10 millimeter here, and those are 18 millimeters. So, let me pull that out, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to knock this out. Because, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect these tie rod ends while I'm in here. That way, we can go ahead and get those loose and we can maneuver this uh, knuckle if we need to. Pulled the cross shaft bolt out, got the tie rod off, went ahead and finished pulling all your uh, speed sensor off. That's your connector. There is a little piece that attaches right here. I think it's still stuck in. Yeah, I can get it out with a, uh, I get it out with one of these, but that's that. You, Aren't putting a wheel bearing in. Um, try not to mess that up. But other than that, uh, we are ready to try to get this control arm out. Now I'm going to hit it a little bit. It's just starting to come up a little bit. spread it out just a hair. If I can get up in here. That one come out a little bit easier. Nah, that was a little bit harder than the other side to get off. Now that I do have that off, what was happening was the um, control arm was actually walking on the bushings and it was causing it to kind of sway back and forth and then this wheel bearing was bad so he went ahead and decided to go ahead and replace both of them. But now we're gonna have to take control arm off but to do this we have to take the shock out and I think that is a, yeah, I was thinking it was a 21 on the top. No, it ain't. It is a 19. The other one was a 21. Another indicator that that one was changed. went 
that's your top piece and you see where somebody just smashed it all up now the bottom bolts are 21s I know that much right way see how tight it is not too bad figured it was going to spin on me Also, if you need to change your axles, this would be another good time because you got to take these. I think you got to take the uh, shock out to do the axle on here too. Now we're going to get inside of here and mark with a paint marker a sharpie something that you can see and we're going to just draw lines around the outside so that we can actually make sure we get our alignment as close to originally as it was but you won't have to have an alignment after this anyway just because you're changing tie rods control arms and the wheel bearing and stuff like that so just go ahead and draw some lines and just get as close as you can but i'm just going to use a white paint marker and mark them up i know it's a little dark but i'm going to take these off actually these are 21 on the nuts So let me get these nuts off real quick and then I'll show you how I'll pull it out. It's just, uh, it's gonna take a while to loosen all these. I don't wanna bore y'all with all that. Try to get y'all in here. Now the back one on here is gonna be an easy one to get out. It's just like that. And on the outsides, they do look like that. It's just the nut. And it just goes in there just like that nut on the outside is the way this one was i think that's how it should have went on the driver's side but it wasn't that way now biggest thing is right here you have a brake line and it's got a plastic piece on there and you can bend it and it's gonna feel like it's gonna break it's not gonna break i promise you it's just a plastic cover you just want to bend it one way or the other to get it clear. Because it's going to hit one way or the other. Come on. Trying to get it to pull down. Right, 
Okay. Let's see if y'all can see this. Yeah, a little plastic piece. That's all that was up in there. And now, after you move it, you should be able to pull that out just like that. Like I said, I had to use a pair of pliers to get it to pull out because it was pretty tight. Um, first time I've ever done one of these, I thought I was going to break it. Like it scared me half to death. So let's set this somewhere over here so I know it goes on that side. Alright. Pull it out. And you can see. They were pretty bad. Now, next step I'm going to do is actually put the control arm back in here and get it started kind of situated before I start taking off the brakes and stuff for the wheel bearing. So here's the control arm. They are lettered R and L for left and right. Right as always passenger side looking at the front of the car like from inside the car to the front. Uh, if you're in America it's going to be passenger side but yeah, we're on the passenger side. And you may have to hammer this in a little bit. Oh, that one slid in pretty decent. that it slides against. Hold on, I'll show y'all what they look like. So these little grooves right here, there's little tabs right there. Now they're sticking off. That's where those little grooves go. So make sure that you line them back up. I know I'm moving y'all all around. Sorry about that started this job yesterday actually then some stuff came up and he needed me to do a few other things because I am at the car lot so if y'all are ever in the area in Clover South Carolina everyone just stop by and say hey what's up you know give a shout out to my own video more than welcome to do that. Doesn't bother me. I can come in and just kind of be like, hey, what's up, man? Alright, now I'm going to tighten these down a little bit. I'm not going to tighten them down all the way because you need pressure, like the weight of the vehicle on here before you torque these down. And I uh, can't remember torque spec right off the top of my head, so I'll have to look them back up because I did the other side yesterday. But. I'm going to just run these down till they're just probably about touching little pieces. So let me do that real quick. I have this tight enough to where I can move this up and down, as you can see. And we're going to go ahead and do the wheel bearing now. And just two 19 millimeters, I hold the actual caliper on. I've already taken one off and loosened the bottom one. This says there. Now you should be able to just pull this caliper up and then you can, I got like a little hanger, you can just hang it right there. You got it hanging where it ain't gonna hurt anything. Now, my rotors have hub centrics on there just because of the aftermarket rims. And the one on the driver's side was painted the butt to get off. So this one I'm guessing is going to be as well. Yeah, I think they're going to be a pain in the butt just like the other one. So I'm just going to have to go around and keep hitting it with my mallet. Because we're reusing these rotors and I don't want to mess them up. So just going to go around and just 
keep hammering it off until we get it off. So I got the centric off, but I cannot get the rotor off. I mean, it is literally busting the rotor. And I've been trying to hit it where I know it ain't gonna damage anything, but it's not coming off. Um, I'm just gonna see if we can go ahead and do rotors and pads while we're at it. I'm just gonna take the axle nut off. That is a 36 millimeter, by the way. And then I can just take the uh, hub assembly off with the uh, rotor still attached. So um, I believe those are 15s. I don't know if I can get the in right beside them or not. No, I'm going to have to use an extension, which is all right. Should only be three of them. <clears throat> Do not know what they torque to. Next, I have to look up all the torque specs again. Getting the initial break on it is the hard part. See, I'm threading them off by hand once I get them pretty much loose. Now I'm going to use my impact and I'm going to zip this nut off real quick. There's a washer behind it. Those are them. And if this is anything like the other one, it's going to be extremely stuck on there. So. You probably Pardon my language, but. Let me hammer on this for a little bit longer and we'll get her out eventually. Got it out and you can see why she was in there. And there's rust all in there. I got some sandpaper on me. And clean it up. And go around it. Clean it off with some brake cleaner real quick. But now we got this. Go get the new one, show you what it is, and I'm gonna show him that rotor. Let's see if he wants to go ahead and do brakes. That's where I already in here. And it ain't no extra charge. 
in labor. Uh, where's the wheelbarrow? Oh, it's right here. Things that I do not know where he got these from. He already had them. Yep. He comes with a nice pair of gloves. I don't have any pot on this one, I see that. Come on, open up. There you go. Come on off of there. There it is. Make sure you put your dust shield back on right. Kind of flattened it out a little bit compared to what it was. Kind of straightened her up. Now. This does go against it like this, I believe. Yeah, it goes just like that. But um, I think it goes something like that. I'll figure it out. I'll show you before I put it on. But I'm going to show them the rotor and everything and see if he wants to go ahead and get brakes for this.